Hello there everyone, and today is the first episode of G-Tech. Um, GTT is behind me now. You can go to my channel and there should be a playlist called GTT Episodes. And that should have all the episodes in it, and you can just watch that if you're ever really, really bored. So, G-Tech. Um, this is the first episode, and today I'm going to be talking about Android phones. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I just got this phone about two weeks ago now. And I'm just going to do a quick analysis, what I think about it, what I don't like about it, what I do like about it. And, of course, my opinions will vary from other people's. Um, my phone will vary from other people's, definitely, because mine's on U.S. Sailor, and this is one of, I think, only four Android devices on U.S. Sailor right now. Um, this phone was $200, and then it got marked down to $50 right after we bought it, so I actually got it for free because they took off too much, but we're okay with that. And we told her, and she was still like, okay, well, I'll just keep it. So that was really nice. So, um, let's just go through the basics of Android like you would with iOS. Um, ouch. When you first start it up, you get this lock screen, and, uh, if you tap on it, it depends on who makes your phone, but if you tap on it, it'll probably tell you what to do. I know that with the stock UI, it has a little thing over here that you just drag across. With HTC, at least on this phone, it has this little bar that you just drag down. So when you drag it down, you're welcome to your home screen. And depending on who makes your phone, you might have three home screens, seven home screens, it all depends. Um, mine has seven, I think. One, two, three, yep, seven. Um, and with these home screens, you can of course put uh, shortcuts to your apps, you can put widgets, you can put folders, and you can put, uh, you can put, crap, what is it? Whoa. Um, well, you can put these little toggle switches. That's what I'm trying to get to. But you can put these little toggle switches, like I have for the mobile data, and you just tap on it, and it will toggle it. So now I can leave my house, well after it turns on, I can leave my house and I'll still have internet because this is my Wi-Fi toggle down here. So I'm just going to try to stop that. And of course this one I downloaded, it's an LED light which uses the flashlight on the camera and it's really bright, that really hurts my eyes. So I'm not going to do that anymore. There we go. So um it's basically the same as iOS, you just go here to this all apps list and you find the app that you want to launch and you just tap it and it will launch. And depending on your screen size it might or might not look very good. My screen size is uh, I believe 400 across by 800 down. I don't remember exactly but it's something close to that anyway. So. Um, yeah, that's how you open apps, and then to close the apps, you can use uh, either the home button or the back button, depending on, what, on where you are in the app. So if I go and tap on something in the app, I can press the back button, it'll take me back, or I can press the home button, and it will close the app. Now with Android, multitasking is pretty much the same, but it's actually real multitasking. So. Um, you saw I was just in an app, and then I can go and go on the internet, and let's say I go to Google. So, uh, I'm going on the internet, and I'm on Google, and I want to switch back over to that app. Well, I could hit the home button and go back and launch the app from its app icon, or, at least with my phone, I can hold down on the home button, and I get a list of my recently used apps, and I can just go back and tap on it, and it'll take me right back to where I was. And I can go through this, and when I'm done, I just hold down the home button, tap internet, and I'm back where I was. So that's really nice. I really, really love that feature. Android does handle apps a little bit different. You know, on iOS, when you're in the App Store, you tap it, you tap free, or however much it is, and you tap install or buy now, and it'll ask you for your information, and it will put it on your home screen. Well, 
when you are on Android, you find the app that you want. So let me find, oh, I played this game the other day. Spaghetti Marshmallows. And it takes you to the page with all the information and the screenshots and the reviews and everything. You tap install. And uh, that wasn't a good example because it doesn't try to do anything. So let me find, this one should. You tap install. And it will bring up this page of stuff that the app has access to. So it can see my location, um, it has internet access, it can read my contact data, it can send Linux signals to applications, it can read the phone state and identity, and it can restart other applications. So if you are okay with that, you can tap OK or you can tap Cancel. Um, once you put, Once you tell an app to start downloading, it should come up in the menu bar area here. Uh, telling you that it's downloading, but I think that it already got downloaded. So I'm just going to go back here and find it in here. Why isn't it here? Okay, let's just go back to the market then. So we'll try this again. Spaghetti Marshmallow Light. There we go. And it's starting download. Um, it must be stuck or something. Okay, well, bad example. Um, I guess we'll do Evernote. So it says your item will be downloaded. And if we go back to this page, you can see that it's going to start the download. Or not, I guess. Not sure what's up with my phone today, but it's not installing apps. But anyway, you just do that and it will tell you what it's doing. And you can drag down the menu bar and see what it's doing. And that's really nice, because you don't have to stop browsing to download. So, um, of course, once they're done, they come here, you tap it, use it like any other app. Um, what do I really hate about Android? Well, I hate how it tries to sync everything. Because when I first got my phone, I uh, had all my contacts backed up with the US Cellular My Contacts Backup. And I ran that app, and it downloaded them onto my phone, and I had all my contacts, and I was happy. Then, I added my Google account, and my Facebook account, and my Twitter account, and it tried to pull in all the contacts from all of them, and put them in my contacts book, without telling me. So I had, like, five multiples for everyone, and it was really getting insane. So I finally found out, um, that in the settings, you can go to accounts and sync. Well, this depends on what phone you have. And you can go to, uh, say, your Google account, and you can uncheck sync contacts, and it shouldn't sync your contacts then. So if you go to your contacts, which I'm not going to do, if you go to your contacts, uh, you can filter it by Google, phone, Facebook, whatever you want. But I like just having one set of contacts, and it's a lot easier to manage. So that's one thing I really don't like. Oh, here we go. It's going to start downloading. So uh, you see up in the menu bar, it has a little icon there next to the green shield. And uh, it'll show you how much it's done. So it'll be done here in a sec. And there we go. Spaghetti Marshmallow Light download complete. Um, I don't remember if it, tells, it has to tell you that it's done installing. There we go. Successfully installed. So I just tap that and it will actually load the app for me. So I can go and play the app and when I'm done I just hit the home button and I'm back here. Whoops. Um, one more thing that I really hate about Android is the way that it manages sound. Um, you saw that I was just turning up the sound there in game. That is the media volume which differs from your ring volume which is set to vibrate actually right now and uh, your notification volume and all that you actually technically have three different volume settings so um, if you go to your sound and display in your settings you can see your ringer volume which you can also use for incoming uh, notifications um, you have your media volume which is completely different and even when you put your phone on silent or vibrate this can be all the way up and that's really loud and that would be kind of embarrassing for that to go off in class 
So that's one thing I really hate about Android is you can't just go over here and go to vibrate and have everything and have it be completely silent except for vibrating because media volume can still be up there. So that's something I really don't like and I know that um, on the iPhone and the iPod Touch it has different volume settings for the music player and for everything else but you can generally get things turned down and if you have the iPhone you can always just use the mute switch and it should mute everything. So that's something I don't like about Android. However, I do like the ability to customize everything. Um, as you saw earlier, I have the swipe keyboard on mine, which means that you can just swipe to type. That didn't work very well, but you can just swipe on the letters. And you can, uh, the beta is closed right now, but if it, if it opens up, you can go to Swipe's website and, uh, you can sign up for the beta and when it opens they will let you download a beta of the keyboard and uh, it's really nice if you ever get that chance you should probably take it of course there are other versions on the internet that uh, I guess you don't have to be but that also requires uh, it requires you to go into your settings and tell your phone to accept installations that aren't from the market and that could be potentially dangerous if you were uh, say you put in someone else's SD card and an app launched or something I don't know but uh, generally you only want to install stuff from the market unless you know what you're doing um, of course on iOS devices uh, unlocking everything is called jailbreaking and on Android devices, it's called rooting your phone. So, um, I haven't rooted my phone because I don't really see a need for it. But when you root your phone, you can get access to stuff like tethering your phone without having to pay your carrier for tethering, which would be really nice, but I'm not going to do that. At least not in the near future. Um, that's about it, to be honest. Um, of course, this is a phone, this is an iPod, so I probably can't make complete judgment of which is better, but in my honest and simple opinion, I think iOS is better for people who want something simple, and Android is better for someone who wants to be able to customize everything. So, that is this video. I know it's really long, I'm sorry about that. But this is the first episode of GTEC, and I wanted to make it nice and thorough and everything. And I hope I can cut down the times in the future. So thanks for watching this video, and I will see you next month.